I say shouts out to all my brothers and sisters out there in social media land. This is indeed a great day to be alive. This is a day that the Most High Heavenly Father have made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. So, got a little leisure time on the day. Let's see if we can get some brothers and sisters on the horn. On this morning, we're going to deal with a couple of things concerning blessedness. Everybody wants to be blessed some kind of way. <laughs> Everybody want to be blessed. But the method that we use to move according to blessedness King Rashard, I've been trying to call you this morning. Uh, I did see you call me back. I think I was on a long distance phone call. So I hit you back. It shouts out to you. Uh, yeah, it's seen that's right, King Lemio. Shouts out to you all. We're going to come on here. I want to deal with. Shouts out to you, big bro. Glad you was able to chime in on the line because I got some things that I want to say specifically pertaining to some of the things that you've been experiencing over the last couple of days, which I'm sure many of our brothers and sisters not going to be no strangers to. So we're going to talk about blessedness. And uh, we're also going to go to YouTube and we're going to make this same video again. We're going to pick this blessedness up back over here in the book of Matthew. Book of Matthew. Fifth chapter. I think somebody need to hear this again. Shouts out to you, Yara Yah. I think somebody need to hear this again. Because how we deal with life when we start taking hits. Sometimes life can keep on punching you and keep on punching you. But, but we're going to be all right. We're going to direct some of these videos because we don't want brothers and sisters to think that we're moving in no type of craft at all. We're going to come and we're going to make our brothers and sisters understand how important it is to continuously be the hand of the Most Highest provision in the lives of other people. Now, I do believe that, that our helps ministry accounts are down probably to a little or nothing. I think the last time I checked, I think the paper or the cash app account got maybe seven dollars in it, and I think the PayPal account probably got about maybe about eighteen to nineteen dollars in it. And so um, we're gonna once again ask brothers and sisters that can and will make contributions to those help ministries that they will, and they'll do so. Uh, somebody be so kind to put those uh, accounts on the screen. PayPal.me forward slash Dimitri78. And somebody else can put dollar sign Dimitri Milligan on there. Those are the helps ministry accounts. And they don't go to fuel things of my own personal life. So we want to get that right out the gate. Uh, I try not to keep track. Even though I keep receipts on everything, I try not to literally keep track. But if I had to give brothers and sisters an ideal, I would believe that 
we have probably done better than $10,000 worth of assistance where our brothers and sisters are concerned. Uh, King Richard, you got PayPal forward slash, but you need PayPal.me forward slash. So take that down because some people don't be confused. PayPal.me forward slash Dimitri78. So I will believe that we, and I'm saying that 10000 is just, that's just like a bare minimum that I'm thinking about. I would like to believe that it's been more than that that have been uh, distributed amongst our brothers and sisters uh, through their times of need and through their times of help. Mind you, I want to tell some of the brothers and sisters that have received help over the years at the hands of these particular avenues that have been set up. Uh, don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly that you forget that in your time of abundance that you re would reciprocate those things that have once been done, all right? Because there'll be many people who can receive help or can see the Lord's hand of provision show up in their life at the hands of the brothers and sisters. And then in their hour, in their hour of abundance, they forget to reciprocate those things and fail to understand, hey, it's going good for you right now. But some of your brothers and sisters may be in the same condition that you was in yesterday. So, we want brothers and sisters to be mindful of that. And uh, I want to tell you a couple of stories before we get started. I told you how on um, about a month ago, my wife's car went down. Uh, I generally have a car that I don't drive too much parked in my driveway. And my wife, she parks her car in front of that one. And I'll tell you that when my wife's car went down, I had one car on the flat. And I couldn't get the other car out. So I was able to go and purchase another truck so that my wife could drive my work truck back and forth to work. And uh, and that's kind of what worked out for us. It was along that time that that I was expressing to my brother and my sister about all the different things that was happening. Man, this car done broke down. Man, that one done broke down. Man, that was in the shop. Man, that hurt me. And and my brother he hauled off and said, "Well, well, that's what I'm talking about. Y'all got too much stuff." Don't nobody need all that stuff, man. Y'all just, well, you know, y'all. And I said, man, be careful what your mouth utters. So my wife's car got out the shop. I was able to hook my work truck up back up to my trailer. And now I got an extra truck that I purchased, which in my mind, I just said, well, I just put it on Facebook Marketplace or you know, Craigslist or something like that, I'll sell it and get my money back. Never thought no more about it. That following week, my brother on his way to uh, come to work. And he calls me and say, man, somebody stole my truck. And I was like, what? He said, yeah, my truck is gone. Well, my brother, he don't have no, he don't have no job, so he works with me. And, uh, and so just to keep a few dollars in his pocket, you know. So when somebody come along and take something from you, that, that really I messes you up all by itself. So we made the video, be careful what your mouth utter, because I want my brother to understand is that Sometimes the Most High teach everybody a lesson. And I'd like to believe that he was teaching him a lesson by making him to understand that everything ain't for everybody. So you don't put your mouth on what other people are doing. Uh, especially when you know full well why they do it. So 
I would have never bought the truck if my wife didn't need it. If she didn't need to use my work truck. So the truck sat over there, and now his truck is stolen. Well, give me an opportunity to show him some, some things because the word had to be practical. You, you got to apply this word to your life. You can't say that God is this, God is that, and then as soon as you get with a situation, you fall apart and forget that, hey, you know what? The same God you're talking about, he watching everything. So I spent $2,500 for that truck. And being that my brother didn't have no way to get up, you know, it was also another lesson to show brothers and sisters, you don't just spend every dime that you get as soon as you get it. You have to save and you have to put up because you never know when something's going to happen. You never know when somebody's going to need something. But I was showing them, I said, listen, last week you uttered, we had too much stuff and you didn't think that all that was necessary. This week, you don't have no truck, and you don't have no extra stuff. So that leaves you in a bad situation. But I'll praise it be to the most heavenly father that I did have that truck. And I thought about it for one reason, but lo and behold, that that truck would eventually end up in the hands of my brother so that he could pick himself up and keep on moving. And then three days later, he calls me to tell me, Man, they done stole that truck, too. <laughs> they stole that truck, too. You know what I'm saying? So, so my brother was able to save up him uh, $1,500. And I told him, I said, well, I paid $2,500, but I eat the 1000 and uh, to get you rolling, you save up what you can save up. You go to work with me. I make sure you make the money. Just don't spend none of it. And he did that. And outside of a week, a week and a half, he had what he needed. And to any other brothers and sisters, you'll get to see the same thing that he got to see. Because what he got to see is how, how easily money gets away from you. You see, but when you got something, you prioritize, you say, I'm saving every dime, I'm saving every dime. And you see all the areas that you spend money on, that your money just dwindle away. When you really start saving it, you be like, wow, that, dang, that came way faster than I thought. But nevertheless, his $1,500 and my $1,000, that got ate up. Mind you, this money don't come out of the account because I don't extract from the account when it comes to people that are connected to me, like my brother and my sister, my family members, my friends and things like that, you know, in most cases, I'm able to help them out of what comes out of my own life. Most of the help that comes through the helps ministry or dealing with brothers and sisters that are either connected to Facebook or either connected to the YouTube channel or either if somebody that's connected to me have a need that's a little bit greater than what I already have, I might be able to extract a little from that to make up for it. But overall, so I'm saying is that to have two trucks stolen in two weeks, man, that can, that can rattle somebody's nerves. That can, that, can, that can mess you up. You know, all praises to the Most High Heavenly Father. He got the phone call saying that they found his first truck. So he goes to pick his truck up. He said, it's going to be 250 and I got it. <laughs> and he called me yesterday and he said, man, the truck is $400 and I'm down here and only got 250 Well, I just so happened to have what he needed. Just so happened to have it. But if I didn't have it, that's where the helps ministry come in at. You see, and I thank the Most High Heavenly Father that I did have it. Uh, never to mind the fact that I've been taking some hits too. You know what I mean? I ain't been able to really work because all of my equipment is down. I got two mores in the shop, one more that's broke, and then another more uh, that I pulled out, which my emergency more, it wouldn't start. But you know what? The more that's keeping me going right now, the one more, and this, music, this this video ain't for people that got a lot of money, because I don't have a lot of money. I deal with the people that's more closely connected to me. 
But the one piece of equipment that I got that's keeping me going right now is the piece of equipment that one of my brothers said, Hey, Elder, I got something I'm going to send you. And lo and behold, when it, when it arrived, it was a brand new John Deere riding lawnmower tractor. And the one piece of equipment that's keeping me going until the rest of my equipment gets, gets where it's supposed to be is what comes from the help ministry. You see, we don't beg. We're not beggars. We are opportunists. And what that means is that we give brothers and sisters an opportunity to put their hand to the plow. People can say it if they want to, but ain't nobody going to get me confused with Christian preacher, Sunday morning pastor. That's ain't nobody going to get me confused with a camp leader that's begging for tithes. Ain't nobody going to get me confused with none of that. You see? Because we don't beg for money. We are opportunities. We give people an opportunity to put their hand to a plow. We give people the opportunity to close their mouth and stop talking and then start doing something for their brothers and their sisters. Now, everybody can talk about how good God is, but the question ain't how good God is. Everybody know God is good. The question is how good are you when it comes to your brothers and sisters? So, so that's what we're going to, that's what we're looking at. And we're looking at what it means to be blessed because you can be persecuted in many different ways. And persecution can come through, you know, other brothers and sisters. You can be persecuted by demons, uh, uh, through drug abuse or through alcoholism, through through uh, external means or uh, things that that uh, uh, take influence over you. You can be persecuted by your finances, by lack, by never having enough. There are different ways that you can be persecuted, but it's a way that handles persecution that causes a blessing to arise out of it. And that's one of the things that we're looking at. And even though we still looking for the brothers and sisters to put those things up on the screen, because we are definitely going to challenge our brothers and sisters. We're going to challenge our brothers and sisters. We're going to challenge our brothers and sisters with, with, with one of the greatest things in the Bible. That's dealing with giving. And we're not talking about giving me anything. And I don't say this in a prideful way, but I say this to my brothers and sisters and people that might not comprehend or understand who I am as a person. My house is paid for. I don't have no 30, 30 year mortgage. No, I take that back. Both of my houses are paid for. I don't have no mortgage. My cars are paid for. I don't have car payments. You see? And then I get enough money to pay my lights, gas, and water. And I can keep gas in my cars. And then I can pay my, my insurance. Of course, I don't keep insurance on all the cars I got. I can't afford to do that uh, if, if I'm looking at the money that I got. But the point that I'm making is that what brothers and sisters contribute to their health ministries, that don't go to me. That don't affect me at all. I just become a foot worker or, or what we are, we, are, we, are, we are in the rescue business. We're in the rescue business. For everybody to talk about that they serving the Messiah, they this, that, the other, you understand, you start serving the Messiah, you, you going into the rescue business. He that would be greatest among you must become the servant of everybody. That's what servants are in the rescue business. They rescue you when you're thirsty. Can I get you another glass of water? They rescue you when you're hungry. Uh, what will you have? Can I take your order? How may I help you? They rescue you. When you're in trouble, when you got a flat tire, they're in the rescue business. Oh, what size tire? You know, okay, we do it. We put it on. The servants of the Most High are in the rescue business. They're not consumed with taking care of themselves because they understand that if we take care of the Father's business, then the Father will take care of all, bit, all of our business, and that's his promise to us. You see, when somebody has a fire and they call 911, the people that are designated to be in the rescue business are now on the way. They are on the way. You have a person that's designated to drive the fire truck. But how can a person that's designated to drive the fire truck drive the fire truck if he don't have a fire truck? Or if the engine is gone out in the fire truck and it needs to be repaired? 
How can the person put the fire out who's supposed to control the ladder, but the ladder is connected to a truck that won't start or will not move? How can the one that's going to go into the burning building go into the burning building when his suit is outdated and his oxygen tank don't work? Now you see people suffering and you see people perishing when they're supposed to be being rescued. What are we saying? When we are in the rescue business on the Most Highest program, they'll take other brothers and sisters to become fuel. To make sure that we have the things that we need to complete the work that's set before us to do. When we come on and we tell you that throughout the course from this month, from about January up until now, and it's just the middle of May, that we have probably contributed over $10,000 to assist the brothers and sisters. That money has came at the hands of those people that have put their hand to the plow and said, hey, the most I gave me extra. Here, I can do something over here. And we always come back and give a report so that our brothers and sisters that are doing these things can know where their seeds are being sown and how they are benefiting. It's hard to be in the rescue business if you don't have what you need to work with. So everybody plays a part. So the people in the rescue business, the fire department, they can only survive by the taxes that's extracted from the people in the city. And as those little things come off of the people that's in the city, then they'll funnel over here into a fund that makes sure that the firehouse is right, that the people are taken care of, that the ones that's doing the rescue have everything that they need. And this is how it is. As it is in heaven, so will it be done on earth. And people are always talking about how good God is. Well, if God only being good to you, and you ain't reciprocating that goodness onto your brothers and sisters, that God you talking about, he ain't being good. You got the wrong God. Because when Satan does things for people, and they take and they hoard all of them things to their own self, that ain't the God that, that's in the, that ain't the, that ain't the servant God. That's not him. That's another God. So we're not beggars for money. We are opportunists. We give people the opportunity to be the most highest hand of provision. So somebody be so kind to get those accounts up on the screen. PayPal.me forward slash Dimitri78. And then we have dollar sign Dimitri Milligan. That is our helps ministry. It's been up and running since the late young General Deshaun Tatum had passed away. And it's been a, a, a benefactor of many brothers and sisters who have found themselves on hard times. We want to keep that going. We want to keep that going. See, I can only want, rescue one person. But when we collectively pull ourselves together, we can rescue a hundred people. We can rescue a thousand people. It's just how it go. So, for the brothers and sisters that find themselves in places where you feel like you're being persecuted, you understand that this scripture say, blessed to you first when men shall revile you and persecute you and speak evil of you falsely. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad Great is your reward. There's a great reward that comes out of being persecuted in these different type of ways. The book of Sirach, second chapter, says, My son and my daughter, when you come to serve the Lord, set your heart all right and prepare your soul for temptation and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble to go out of his sight, but cleave to him that you may be increased at your last end. See, every time the Most High puts somebody in a bad situation, and then we as brothers and sisters can collectively show up as his hand of provision in their life, not only do they have the thing that they need, but God has increased them at the same time by showing them that he is fully aware of what they are going through and that their blessing wasn't going to come from the place that they thought it was going to come from. Their blessing was going to come in a way that they know beyond a shadow of a doubt this couldn't be nobody but God that did this for me. 
that you may be increased. He says, so whatever come upon you, you got to learn how to take that thing cheerfully. We still struggling with taking persecution cheerfully, even though the Most High said it was a great reward following it. That's why we should be, we still struggling with that. We still struggling with taking things that come up on us cheerfully. We still struggling with that. Even though the promise is that he would increase us in the last end, we still have a hard time. Soon as something happens, we fall apart. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm going to hurt somebody. Oh, man. They ain't going to be out there talking about me. Oh, man. Listen, we got the scripture, and we always talking about we believe. But when God say, blessed are you, he's directly connecting your blessing to how you handle a particular situation. He said, okay, I tell you what, if I can send somebody out there to start persecuting you, slandering your name or lying on you, speaking falsely about you because you're trying to do right. He said, if you can take that, I'll bless you. Now, when we look at how we respond to some of these things, do we deserve the blessing that the Most High talking about? Because it seemed like to me that we fall right apart. Five times I had to snatch my brother in his collar. Boy, get yourself together. Get yourself together. You can't be out here talking about God is the most high, this the most high, that, and, and because of this. So, you know, I showed him something. I said, how many cars have you had that you never spent the dime for? We start counting them. I said, okay, your sister gave you this car right here. Bam. I said, then you got another brother to come along and gave you this car right here. Bam. Nice Dodge Ram. You had another brother came along and gave you a red Ford truck. Bam. Then you had another Islamic brother that came around and gave you a Lexus that was nice and clean and good running condition. Then your sister came back around and gave you another car, a Magnum, a Dodge Magnum. I said, that's five cars. We can count on one hand that you have spent a dime for it that the Most High gave you. I said, you mean to tell me he can give you five things and you can thank him for it and he can come and take two things away from you and you can fall apart as though he haven't done nothing? I mean, what can he do besides get up? But this is the condition that we're in when we're dealing with going through persecution. We're dealing with being on the ground. Well, well, let me show you something, brother and sister. While you on the ground, God got his rescue missionaries out there. They looking for people to rescue at any given moment. But somebody got to find themselves in a bad situation. And the worst thing that can happen is for people to be in a bad situation and those who are responsible for being the fuel that fuels the rescuers in this world have fallen down on their responsibility. Am I saying that you have a responsibility to give? You better know I'm saying it and I ain't taking it back because the scripture makes it clear. If you have received these things freely, then you are to give freely as well. You don't have to give anything to me, but you should become a rescuer on God's program and start looking on a daily basis for who can I rescue when you know that the Most High have blessed you in abundance. In the book, in the book of Deuteronomy, it declares when you have eaten and you are full, when you have gotten your houses and your land and when your crops have produced and when you have eaten and you are full, remember that is the Lord that gives you the power to gain wealth. You better remember that he's the one that's responsible for the abundance that you got. And that abundance that you got, there's supposed to be some of it that spills off onto your brothers and sisters who have been predesignated in the rescue business like firefighters have been designated to rescue people from burning houses 
like the Red Cross have been designated to rescue people when their houses get destroyed by tornadoes, like the food pantries have been designated to rescue people when they are broke or when they lose their job or don't have food, like the unemployment office have been designated to rescue people who have lost their job and don't have no income. God got servants out here whose number one job is to go to and fro through the earth looking for brothers and sisters that believe in him, that put their trust in him so that they can become his hand of provision in their life. Whatsoever come upon you, take it cheerfully and be, and be of good cheer when you are changed to a low estate. He said, because gold is tried in the fire, but acceptable men and women are tried in the furnace of adversity. He said, I got to put you in the flames. Why do I got to put you in the flame? Because I got a group of people over here that specialize in putting flames out and rebuilding the burnt up house and replacing everything just so that you can be increased enough to know that I got your back. But we can't be one sided. We can't be one-sided. You see, we don't have brothers and sisters that have a desire to be in the rescue business. Where is that going to leave everybody else who has issues? Where is that going to leave everybody else? Where is that going to leave everybody else? See, I can't count. I don't know where the money that you put in church go to. I've been in church. I put money in church my whole life. I was one of the most, uh, uh, the, the top line tithing people. I've been, I put so much money in church that they come to Dick and them come, come to me and tell me, hey, uh, you know, your, your tithes is ranking up there with the best. I've been self-employed all my life. I done made a good living all my life. I, I put 10, my 10% allowed to be $1,000. You see, because I'm going to make my own money. Oh, man, we need you to encourage the people, encourage the people, encourage. So you get up there and you encourage the people and show the people how to get these blessings, how you going to give, how you going to do this, how you going to do that, only to come and find out that in your time of need, you go back to the same people that came and got you, and they don't have nothing for you. Well, where is all my money going? This building fund been over here for the last 20 years, and the building still ran down. The foot the roof still ain't repaired like it's supposed to be. The carpet still needs to be. No where is all this money? So I can't compensate for where the money in church is going. And I ain't speaking against the church as though it's a bad thing. I'm speaking against it as an example because I've been a, 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 a significant, intricate part of the working of the Christian church when I was there. These things I know for myself. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about from an individual standpoint, boots on the ground in your own individual life concerning what God do for you. I'm not talking about what God do for the collective body. I'm talking about where it gets real personal, where it comes down to you and him and what you going to do. You got the right to do whatever you want to do with what he gives you, but what you going to do with it? You see, when you got yours. Do you not know that when the children of Israel was going through taking the land that God promised Joshua, that each time they took land, all, 12, all 11 tribes had to go and continue to fight? He said, okay, Levi, okay, uh, okay, Issachar, you got your land, you got your land, but you leave your land right there. You get right back out there with Dan, Gad, Naphtali, and all the rest of them, and you continue to fight. And all of y'all continue to fight, even though you're getting your land, you continue to fight with your brothers and sisters until every last one of you get the land that I promised you. Ain't nothing changed about that. Ain't nothing changed about that. When you know your brother or your sisters ain't got their land, you know that they ain't got their stuff, and you got their, your stuff, you got to get out there and find your way. You got to put your hand to the plow. You got to hook yourself up with other rescuers on God's program, and you got to start rescuing them brothers and sisters until they all get theirs. That's, you know, it's what it is. I know what a benefit and what a blessing that this particular thing have been to people. And I'm giving the most high praise, honor, and glory because we got a set of brothers and sisters that have been con contributing since the very beginning. And every time somebody receives help, every time the Lord's hand of provision shows up in somebody's life, they can't give the credit to who they call Elder Milligan. They don't give the credit to me. 
But I'll make them go on there and make a Facebook post thanking all of the brothers and sisters that contribute because it's not my money that's rescuing them. It's my little couple of dollars uh, combined with the monies that other brothers and sisters little become much when we put it in the master's hand. But how can a firefighter run into a burning building when the suit is outdated and they don't have an oxygen tank on that works properly. How can a firefighter race to a burning building when the tires on the truck done went flat? How can a firefighter get the one that's supposed to be on the ladder and on a water hose to put the fire out when the truck itself won't move? How can a firefighter be comfortably housed when there's no food in the icebox and they have to spend 48 hours uh, 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 each time when they're there? How is, how, is the, how is the servant, how is the rescuers going to get their job? of rescuing done and who's going to be held accountable when the house burns down to the ground with the people in it because the firefighters didn't have what they needed to do their job who's going to be held accountable for that oh we better think about it baby we better think about it because just us running around talking about how good God is and oh I'm blessed and I'm highly favored if you blessed and you highly favored you should never have to utter those words out of your mouth because your brothers and sisters should be the one on the sideline shouting good God Almighty she's blessed and highly favored he's blessed and highly favored how do I know that because when I was in my time of trouble out of nowhere here they came with a blue suit on and a cape on it, flew into my situation, rescued me, raised me back up, and pointed me to look at the most high. That's what you better be aware of. So, let's go take a look at a couple of scriptures. Our praises to the most high heavenly father. See, I have allergic reaction to people that run around talking about how blessed they are because they got things, because they got a house, because they have cars, because they like, hey, listen, they don't say this with pride, but I have more houses and more cars and this and that and still don't run around talking about I'm blessed. You ain't going to talk about you blessed until your blessing can be felt in the lives of brothers and sisters who have fallen down on hard times and have lost the ability to see the one that declared, I will never leave you or forsake you. How is that going to come to fruition? They need to see God in you. Just like the people in a burning building see God in the fireman that's coming to rescue them. They don't thank the fireman. They thank God that he sent somebody in the hour of need to rescue them. That's how that go. So we all going to have to take a second look. We're going to look at we're going to look at some scriptures, and we're going to encourage our brothers, because this is a twofold message. We're going to encourage our brothers that have found themselves in a place of persecution, in a place of hardship, in a place of hard time, where you now you're starting complaining. You start complaining. You want to tell everybody your story about how bad it is, how down it is. How, well, see, you know what? The rescuer is coming to increase you, to make you understand. Hey, it ain't no accident that you're right there. Do you think that God don't see you right yesterday when you was up good? You was praising God. And now everything ain't looking so good. Now you're starting to lose your hope. You're starting to lose faith in the world. But see, the rescuer comes to rescue you from making a bad choice of turning your back on God as though he's not there. That's what this is all about. It's a twofold message. It's a message for the one who's been down and forgotten about because you might be going through a divorce or a bad marriage. You think because you done lost your job, that's a reason to fall apart. You think because somebody done stole your cars, that that's a reason to fall apart. You think because somebody's out there talking about you and lying on you, that's a reason to fall apart. Well, God got to send rescuers that'll come and rescue you from that state of mind so that you don't end up cursing him through your circumstance or your situation. 
But at the same time, God is meaning to make the person that ain't in that condition that he have blessed. He mean to make them understand that you are the fuel that fuels the one who I put in the world to become a rescuer to my people. And because I have blessed you abundantly and you choose to hoard everything, you won't put the money where it's supposed to be so that my rescuers can continue to rescue and bring faith back into my people. It's a twofold message. It's a message for the one that's down. That don't you let your circumstances make you curse God. And it's a message for the one that's up. Don't you let the fact that you up right now make you believe that you can't be down tomorrow. For it's a simple matter for God to make a poor man rich and a rich man poor. And he can raise up one and then he can debase another one. And you can be that one if you start taking what he has given you freely. And then hoarding everything to yourself and forget about your brothers. So, so let's go look at a couple of, first thing we're going to do is we want to encourage the brothers and sisters that put their hand to the plow. We, we want to encourage the brothers and sisters that put their hand to the plow. Uh, we want them to be encouraged by knowing where it is that that their uh that their gifts get sold. Let's see here. Y'all just bear with me for a second. We're gonna skip to a couple of things. Yeah, we're gonna skip to a couple of things. Now, this is for the encouragement to our brothers and sisters. You had the PayPal accounts on the on the screen. PayPal.me forward slash Dimitri Milligan. And then you have dollar sign Dimitri Milligan on the screen. Those are accounts that have been specifically set up as a helps ministry that we can become the in the rescue business and that we become the, the Lord's hand of provision. Notice how I'm saying we. Because it's something that we who have been chosen to do this collectively come together and sprinkle a little as individuals which becomes much when we put it all together and then we can go and find out on a sinking mission who needs to be rescued whose faith is on the brink of being destroyed that they need to see God's hand of provision raise up and let me uh, let me show you something we don't just do no anything by happenstance everything is going to be guided by the scripture everything going to be guided by the word so that our brothers and sisters that take from what God has given them can have the comfortability to know that their seeds and their monies will be used for what we say it will be used for and we use the word as our guidance and the spirit as our conviction and ain't nobody gonna hustle us because the word walks before us and in the book of Ecclesiasticus 12th chapter it declares when we do when you will do good, know to whom you doest it. Lest shall thou be thanked for thy benefits. You see, we don't do no anything for no anybody. We know the Bible tells us when we get ready to do good, when we get ready to sow our seeds, you better know to who you are doing it. Because you want to receive thanks and the maximum reward. You don't just, we don't just give money. To anybody. You best believe if you receive if the most high show up as your as uh if you use us to show up as a hand of provision in your life, you best believe, baby. We know everything about it. We know what your situation is, we know what your circumstances is, we know what your job is like, we know what your your life conduct is like, we know whether or not you're just frivolous with money, we know whether you make mistakes, we know whether you don't prioritize, we know whether you buy your wants and beg your needs, we know all of that. We're not just going out throwing nothing in a way simply because you're talking about God is good because you can say God is good all you want and have misplaced priorities operating in your life that cause you to be in a continuous bad situation so the Bible tells us when we will do good we must know to whom we doing it so that so shall we be thanked for our benefits 
Verse 2, he also tells us that we are to do good to the godly man and thou shall find a reward from him. And if uh, if thou shall find a reward, and if not a reward from the, the godly man that we do it from, we will get a reward from the most high. See, this is what part where I was talking about brothers and sisters that receive help but don't reciprocate. You see, we ain't worried about you reciprocate. That's like giving somebody some money and telling them to pay it back. We looking for you to we ain't looking for you to pay it back. Why? Because we got this scripture. Do good to the godly man. And if thou shall find a reward, and thou shall find a reward, and if we're not rewarded from the one that we did it for, we shall be rewarded from the most high. So we don't tell people, we don't give people with the expectancy that they're going to give it back. Though we are grateful when what has been done for them reciprocates and then they come back in their time of abundance and do it. God said there's two ways it can happen. Either I can bless that individual and they can come back and do it. Or if they don't reciprocate and they are the ones who eat and then when they're full, forget who blessed them. He said, I'm going to reward you anyway. That's our guarantee that the accounts are going to stay flourish with what they need because the Bible declares that God will continuously give seeds to the sower and he who goes forth bearing his seeds and weeping shall no doubt again come again rejoicing bringing his sheaves with him you see most high gonna make sure that we get what we need and that's why we said we are not beggars of other men's money we are opportunists we give those that say that they love the lord those that say the lord is they blessing those that say that they like his flourishing because of what we give them the opportunity to reciprocate that same goodness onto their brothers and their sisters there can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that gives no alms. You want to know why some of you are always in bad situations? Because you won't give no alms. And when you don't give no alms, means that you're always occupied in evil. And when you're always occupied in evil, here's what it means. There are only things in this world is the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. When you're occupied in evil, you only care about yourself. And when you only care about yourself, you won't do nothing for anybody else. And when you fall on hard times because no good can come from you. You're looking for God's rescuers to come and rescue you. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If you don't have no good deeds, ain't no good coming to you. If you don't reciprocate these blessings, ain't nothing coming to you. If you don't have a heart to do nothing good for your people, if you don't have a heart to give none of your brothers your money when they're on hard time, if you don't have a heart to do none of that, he said there can no good come to one who is occupied in evil, always thinking about himself. And there is no good that can come to one that does no alms, no acts of kindness. No good deeds helps nobody. There, there can't nothing good come to a brother or a sister like that. He said, give to the godly man, but help not the sinner. You see, we know full well where every dime that people send to this ministry, we know full well where it goes because we go by this word. We're going to make sure. You can't just say that I'm a godly man because the spirit bears witness of the spirit. I can discern and look inside of you and see what's operating on the inside of you, no matter what your mouth say. He said, we are to help the godly man, the one that has faith in God, who's been down and pressed down to the point where his faith now is starting to waver, it's starting to shake. He said, that's the one that you go help. But you don't help the ungodly. You don't help the sinner. You don't help the sinner, man. I ain't giving you no money. Well, I know that you're just about to go blow my money up in smoke. I ain't giving you no money. When I know you're about to go and jump inside of a bottle, I ain't giving you my money. When I know you're about to go and start sitting around, spending it with women, and I, I ain't giving you my money like that. Not because I don't want to, because there's people that I love that are in them conditions. But I can't take what God give me. And then do what I want to do to it. When God tells me what to do with the extra money that I get. 
He said, the extra money that you get, you go and help the one that's believing in me, that needs a little encouragement. You go and help him. If you need to get him some gas money, you go and get him some gas money. If you need him to get him some groceries, you go and get him some groceries. If you need to pay their light bill, you go and pay their light bill. If you got to empty your bank account out to go buy them a car to make sure that they can keep getting up and doing their responsibility, then that's what you do. You just make sure that they're a godly man and woman, that they seeking to serve me. That's what God telling us. Do well unto him that is lowly, but give not to the ungodly, and hold back thy bread, and give it not unto him, lest he overmaster thee thereby, or for else thou shalt receive twice as much evil for the good that thou shalt have done to him. Have you ever done good to people and it seemed like they don't even appreciate it? You've done good to people and when you think that you need your money, oh man, don't be sweating me about that. Oh, that wasn't nothing but tender. I don't care what it was. It was mine. Well, no, it ain't that. You shouldn't have never gave it to them. Because you don't give to people like that. You give to the lowly man. The lowly man is a humble man. The lowly man is a man that knows he's in trouble. The lowly man is a man that knows, hey, brother, I know I'm in bad shape, man. And some of this is caused by my own hand, man. But I know I need some help, man. Can you please help me, man? I thank the most high. You give to the lowly man. But you don't give to that one that the Bible said, here's the certain type of man. He humble himself and go a crouching when he needs something, but then once he receives it, he turns as a lion. Oh, man. Yeah, it wasn't number $25. Why are you sweating me about that? Oh, you didn't feel that way when you was broke. You didn't feel that way while your stomach was growling. You didn't feel that way. But see, that's why the Bible says, trust not your enemy, because as iron rusts, so does his wickedness. you got people like that. They'll go a crouching when they need something, but when it's time for them to pay it back, you see something different. So, so, verse 7 says, give to the good and help not the sinner. That's what he's saying. Give to the good and help not the sinner. So, for brothers and sisters that make their contributions to this help ministry so that we can uh, be God's rescuers in this world, in these cities, in these states that we live in, on these social media platforms, so that we can be God's rescuers in this world. I wish one day at the end of my life it could be seen, but I'll see it when I get the glory. Look where God roll it down and say, look how many people got rescued at the hands of the work that was doing. Look at how many brothers and sisters the gift got multiplied that came alongside of you and start funneling and that vision. And look how many of them became rescuers on my program. Look at how many people found me as you showed up as my hand of provision in their life. Look at how many people's faith was restored at the hands of the work that was being done. You brothers and sisters, that have been putting your hand to the plow. You brothers and sisters, whether it was $2, whether it was $5, whether it was $10, we had some brothers and sisters that have given $500, $1,000. We got some brothers and sisters that in their time of abundance, they have came out and said, here, elder, I don't know what you're going to do with it, but put it for whoever needs it. And if you happen to need it along the way, you use it. You see, when brothers and sisters are doing that, our prayer is that the Most High would double and triple everything that they have left. I ain't talking about just double and tripling their money. I'm talking about double and triple their encouragement if it's needed. Double and triple their finances. Double and triple the love that they have for the brother. Double and triple their mercy, their grace, their kindness, their forgiveness. Double and triple every aspect of life that they have. If they got one car, double and triple it. Turn it into two or three so that they can be able to help Help somebody that come in from out of town. Help somebody whose car break down. Help somebody whose car get stolen. Double and triple it. That's what our prayer is. And there are brothers and sisters that have fallen up under that prayer. And the most high have answered that prayer. And begin to double and triple. That's why we have been able to be in the rescue business. 
And we are not going to do anything else except be in the rescue business. Our issue is that whether or not we have to always give other brothers and sisters an opportunity to join God's rescuers in this world. We don't beg for money. We don't do that. We don't do that. We don't beg for money. We don't beg for money. Let's go here. It takes boldness. You got to get out the boat. If you want to be a rescuer, that means that whoever would be greatest among you must become a servant. And the servant is the greatest person on the planet. The one, the bag boy. The one that, may I take your order? May I take your bags? This way, sir. This way, sir. Right over here, sir. Is there anything else you need? Can I get you some more coffee? Can I get you some more water? Those are the greatest people on the planet. Because when they get through serving, they receive a reward. Blessed are those people. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and, uh, uh, and not faint. They shall mount up on wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let me show you what that means. That don't mean that those that, oh, I'm just sitting down. I'm waiting on the Lord. He, he promised me he was going. No, that's not what that means. You'll be sitting there for the rest of your life if that's the mindset that you get. They that wait on the Lord are talking about what is a waiter. When you start talking about what is a person that waits, you have to look at it like a person that waits on tables at a restaurant. They that wait on the Lord. A waiter is a servant. He's the one. Okay, can I get you see? Okay, let me get you a menu. Okay, have everybody decided what they want yet? Okay, what do you need this? Okay, what do you need? And a waiter is running from table to table, serving everybody in the place. But at the end of his service, he said they shall mount up on wings of eagle. To mount up on a wing of eagle mean that you're going to be uplifted. As each family leaves the table, they leave a reward on the table. And when you got 50 tables in there and you done done all that waiting and you start going by them tables and each table, one table got $5, one table got $10, one table got $100 on it, one table, see they done made two or three days worth of work, uh, they done made two or three days worth of money over what the restaurant pays them. They'll mount up on wings of eagle. They're able to fly. They're able to move. They're able to make decisions because they have the money behind them to do it. They will run and not be weary. You know why they'll run and not be weary? It's because they know that though they may be tired, though they may have to deal with attitude, though they may have to deal with, they know at the end of the day when this family get up and leave, it's a reward waiting on them. They shall walk and not faint. Means walk and not faint. Means that wherever they walk in life, whatever they put their hand to, they will not give up because they know it's an unseen spiritual force behind them that is driving them and giving them strength to keep on going. That's what it means to wait. To wait upon the Lord means to serve the Lord. To serve the Lord means to become a rescuer of the Lord's people during their time of need. And you got to make a choice where you want to be at. You see? He said, they, whoever want to be great among you. You got everybody trying to be great and all the different areas. They want to be great, so they reach for the pulpit. They want to be great before they reach for the deacon board. They want to be great so they reach for the high place in the camp. They want to be great so they reach for the top seats in the pharmaceutical empire. They want to be great so they reach for the priest, the priesthood. All of those places that they reach for don't bring them into greatness. It brings them into foolishness. But he that would be great amongst you, let him drop down before everybody and start picking men up and putting them on their shoulders and carrying them and making those men great. And though those men will reach a place of greatness, their greatness could not come to fruition if it was not for the greatest one, according to the Bible, is the one that serves the people. So you got to define what greatness is. How are you going to be great when you got pride? 
Oh, man, they ain't going to do me like that. They ain't going to do me no any. Man, I don't know why you just let them people do that to you. I don't know why you just keep on. Why you just let those people do that to you over and over again, and you know they ain't going to do right. That's because I'm, I'm striving to be great. I'm striving to be great. Even sometimes my own sweetie pie, as much as she loved me, as much as she loved me, she's always concerned about how people treat me. But people don't always treat me like she feel like that they should treat me. And every now and then she say, I don't know why you keep on giving them another chance. I don't know why you let them just do you like that, any kind of way. And I want to tell her, I want to tell her, sweetie pie, just look around. Have you looked at your life lately? Have you looked at all the blessings? Have you looked at all the doors that God has just slammed open? I do it. Because I'm striving to be great. But we don't always understand what greatness is because the world has put emphasis on being great to mean being something that people uh, respect or being at the top of a pinnacle is what makes you great. But not in God's eyes. What makes you great is when you're completely unaffected by the things in this world. And your love and your concern for your brothers and sisters cause you to be able to have a spirit that's humble enough to serve other people. And I don't know what's up with that dude, man. I'm, what? He don't even know he a crack. He don't even know he a jump. What that dude doing with him? Man, what they doing with him? You know what I'm saying? What? If I look up. Hold up, man. What they do? He over there sleep all over there in his yard and sleep on his steps, drunk. What, what they doing with him? What are they doing with him? See, some people look and they can see your greatness. They don't know where your greatness come from. They define your greatness by what they think about the world. They don't know your greatness come from. So when they see where your greatness really come from, it don't make sense to them. Because your greatness comes from being able to be identified with the one who have lost everything. The one who is drunk, sleep on somebody's step. The one who is cracked out. The one who is broke with no job. Your greatness lies with the person that is broken, that don't have nothing. Because you as a servant, your job is to get up under him and find a way to raise him up. But the common mind, the average mind, they don't see that because they don't understand what greatness is. You got to understand, he will be great among you, must become the servant. And everybody, everything ain't for everybody. Everybody can't be on the fire department. But there are people that are responsible for the food that is in the icebox that feeds the firemen while they're waiting on somebody that needs to be rescued. There are people that are responsible for making sure that the firehouse is in good shape to house the people that are doing the rescuing. There are people that make sure that the trucks, that the axes, the equipments, the ladders, the fire hoses, there are people that make sure that all of those things are in order. They are servants of servants. So, let's show you this. Because we ain't beggars. We opportunists. We give brothers and sisters the opportunity. You see, somebody will look at the way that a brother delivered the word when he on a on a stage, out of town somewhere, and they'll look at that and say, man, look, that's my brother. Oh, man, he's great. Look at where he at now. Look, he on TV. That's that's pop. They'll look at that and they'll call that greatness. Well, that's only a, a symptom. The real greatness is going to come from those that's able to hear the message and respond to it with action in their life. Those are the great ones. And so in order for that to happen, People have to be continuously given an opportunity. That's why the Most High give us an opportunity. He said, whosoever will, let them come. He gives men the opportunity to come to him. And when you're going to come into being a servant or, or a rescuer on God's program in this world, you must be given an opportunity to do it. It start with you. We give you the opportunity. Let me show you how you use your opportunity to get it done.
Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven, and also eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon them. You see that? This is responding to the call or responding to the opportunity that you've been given. We told you what we were aiming to do. We need to get our accounts back in a place to where we are able to assume our rescuing ability. I'm only one person. My finances can be depleted like that if I'm operating by myself because there's too many brothers and sisters that have need. But when we collectively come together and contribute to these things, then we are able to do more. And we don't come every week or every Sunday morning. We don't come every two weeks. We don't come every month. We don't come every other month. We come in maybe sometime, maybe, maybe once every six months. Maybe sometime, maybe once a year, we'll come back. Because once we get what we think is sufficient for us to, to be on our rescue mission, we leave people alone. But this is what happened to every brother and sister who have ever took a dime out of your pocket and put it toward anything. It has never went for me. It's what the Bible tells you to do. Cast thy bread. Thy bread is thy substance. Cast thy bread upon the waters. The waters always represent the multitude of people in the earth. He said, cast thy substance or thy money upon the people, and after many days you shall find it. That means that you can't lose it. You've made an investment. And it says, give a portion to seven and also eight. Because you do not know what evil shall be upon the earth. He said, and you cast your bread out on the waters amongst people because you don't know what kind of evil is coming on the earth. You don't know what kind of evil going to befall or going to hit your life. You don't know whether it's going to be you whose job shut down. You don't know whether it's going to be you whose car gets stolen. You don't know whether it's going to be your wife that lose her job and now you don't have enough operate on one income. You don't know. So you cast your bread out up on the waters while you're being blessed in abundance and you're protecting yourself. Because the same way your bread goes out amongst the people and becomes rescuers for those people. As God raising those people up, he's going to be debasing other people. And you might be one that have to be brought low. And he said that when you are brought low, after many days you'll find it. He said, you'll find that brother, that sister that received that blessing from you. That brother, that sister, that brother, that sister that had uh, uh, received a blessing from those uh, help ministry accounts. He said, that brother, that sister grew up and came back to do great and start sowing seeds. He said, in your time and age, other brothers that have benefited start doing the same thing. And in your time of need, now you'll find the bread that you cast among your brothers and sisters. Now, it's going to be you that needs the assistance from the accounts that have been set up. It's going to be you that needs to see God's hand of provision show up so that your faith can be restored. It's going to be you. you know, so, you know, so, you see, the thing is, is like I said, you know, we got to reinforce that because, you know, people will talk to they blue in the face, but when it comes to their money, People make every excuse in the world. I don't know who, I don't know who he think he is. I ain't giving that dude no money. I ain't, I don't, he ain't care of the city, man. I ain't, I ain't giving him no money. Hey, I can do that myself. I can find somebody. Yeah, you can. You can. So you best be careful what you let your mouth utter. Be careful what you let your mouth utter because God's listening to what you're saying. And if you feel that way, then God still feels that, you know what, you're right. You sure right. You can. You got plenty of people right here in your neighborhood, right here in your community that you can that you can go out and bless. Now, go out there and do it. Go and become a rescuer on their program. Then you come to understand that everybody ain't equipped to be a firefighter. 
Then you come to understand that. That everybody ain't equipped to go into certain places. But you're putting your mouth on something that you have no understanding of. So it's either, you know, we do what we do. But for those brothers and sisters that do have an opportunity to respond out of their abundance. And let me tell you something. We had a prayer that covered everything. We pray that the Most High will bless those that give, that he will bless those that have a desire to give, but do not have it. So ain't no excuse for nobody. Because it ain't about how much. It's about the having a desire to get it done. It ain't about how much. I've had people come on there and send $3, $2, and we thank the Most High for that $2 as much as we thank the, uh, the Most High for the $200 that somebody else sent. It don't matter. Because when we collectively come together as a body, it ain't about our individualism no more. It's only about the individualism when you're responding to being called to do something for the Most High that is classified as greatness. Now. And we just read, there can no good come to him that don't give no alms. One of the reasons why my brother had been on, um, he my brother for one. And it's my responsibility to do all that I can for my brother, for my brother. You see, whatever I'm going to do for my brother, I'm going to do for my brother based on what the Most High have done for me in my personal life. You know, that's my responsibility. It's all of our responsibility to care for our own families. I, can't, I don't take what's coming from our helps ministry to make sure that my family is taken care of, to make sure that my children are taken care of. Those are my responsibilities, you see? But my brother have always been a contributor there have never been not one time that I have sought to raise anything for anybody that that brother ain't been first in line. Hey, here's 20, man. Put that over there on the thing. Hey, man, here's all I can give is five. And you know what? So I ain't talking about I'm just using that for an example because there's many other brothers and sisters that have been the same way, been there from the beginning. From the beginning. I could call them by name. But I won't call them by name because the Most High don't want your left hand to know what your right hand to do. And he don't want us sounding a trumpet. So we're making this video from a standpoint of giving other brothers and sisters the opportunity to come along and join a helps ministry. You might not belong to a church. You might not belong to no organization where you can have a place that you desire to give something to. So you've been given an opportunity to do something. So, let's give you another scripture. Let's go look at another scripture. See, I know how it is. When we start talking like this, people, pew, stage right. But what they don't understand, we are servants. And I'm always going to be using the scripture. You can look at it as though it's me, but I'm going to be using the scripture. So ultimately, it's really the one that you say you serve that's bringing you the message. This is Luke chapter 6, verse 38. He instructs us, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet without, it shall be measured to you again. No good can come to him that gives no alms. That's your measurement. But for the person that finds a way to give out of their abundance, mm -mm. he said, when you give, it's going to be given to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together and running over. You know, so it's like, it's like, it's like when my brother told me that I had too much stuff. What he didn't understand is that the stuff don't come 
as a result of me just going to constantly buy stuff. <laughs> it don't. The stuff comes as a result of operating in this principle. He said, when you give, men going to come and give to you. They will give you everything. They will give you everything that you need. They'll give you. You'll have more shoes than you can ever think about. And ain't been in a shoe store. You'll have more clothes than your closets can hold. And ain't never been in the mall. You'll have more stuff. You have more furniture in everything. You have furniture in the living room, furniture in the basement, furniture in every. You have more stuff, but you ain't bought nothing. He said, men shall give unto you in good measure. It will be as though like you got a bag of leaves. You know, leaves are fluffy. So you don't want to just waste another bag. When you know that you can make room so the bag is full, but you know the leaves are fluffy, so you stick your feet in there and you press them down and come back to them, and then you can put more leaves in there. And then you know you still got more room, and you keep pressing them down until the bag is full of leaves and it's compact, and you can't get nothing else in it. And if somebody happened to walk by and hit it, or you try to put something else in there. It just, he said, that's what your life will be like. He said, your life will be just like that. That's how the blessings will be. He said, I put the blessings in there. And you know what? It'll look like it's full. He said, but your blessings will get compacted down. And then you'll look up and every shelf in your house will be full. Every place that you got room to put something, you'll look around and it'll be full. And then next thing you'll know, you'll look around and you ain't got no room. Your driveways ain't got no room. Your lot ain't got no room. Your basement ain't got no room. Your garage ain't got no room. He said, it's pressed down, shaking together and running over and because you ain't got no room, all of those things start to spill off on other people's life. Hey, Meach, man, I was thinking about this. Man, you, hey, yep, I got one. I got one right now. Come on over here and pick it up. You know, yep, 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 I got it. I got it. I got one right now. Come on, yep, yep, you, you come get it. Yep. He said, press down, shake it together, and run it over. Because that's what it do. That's what our life going to be like. You see, and we spend a lot of time and we waste a lot of prayers and we praying to God to bless us. Oh, God, bless me with this. Oh, God, bless me with this. Oh, God, bless me with this. When God said, I'm showing you how to be blessed, but you won't operate in it. I'm giving you things that you need, but why don't you learn how to go out and be a blessing to somebody? If you'll bless somebody with what they need, I'll bless you with what you need. So, so at the end of the day, we still got brothers and sisters that are needing. Nobody needs anything right now. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. But I'm frightened to death to be in a rescue building and somebody's house catch on fire. And the only thing I got is a gallon of water left. Seven dollars. That's a gallon of water. That's a gallon of water compared to a house that's on fire. I've been scared to death. So we try to get out front and ask the brothers and sisters or get the brothers and sisters the opportunity, those that will come with. And see, one thing I understand is that my people are constantly changing. Facebook take people off and then they put a whole new group of people or a whole new group of people or a whole new group of people. And I be saying to myself, man, I wonder what happened to such and such. I wonder what happened to such and such. Boy, they used to always, you know what I mean? But you have a whole new group of people. You see, and each time when we come to ask for something like this, we don't know what nobody going to do. But one thing for sure that I do know, I have never came on Facebook and asked for anything and didn't walk away with more than what I set out to do. It has never happened, and I don't look for it to happen now. So I'm going to ask the brothers and sisters that can and will that they will help us to, to get our accounts back built up and we're not building our account up for no 30 and forty thousand dollars and all that we don't we probably keep on a regular basis maybe six seven hundred dollars in those accounts and i know somebody said well six seven hundred dollars that don't mean that much hey six seven hundred dollars it go a long way when the only thing you might do 
is fill somebody's tank up so that they can get back and forth to work or buy somebody some groceries. See, we ain't trying to meet the grand totality of nobody's needs. We can't buy nobody no cars and, and all that stuff because we don't have people that, that donate that type of money, you see? So, but we shoot to be the simple, the simple hand of provision in the Most High's life when it comes to immediate things that people might need. Immediate things that people might need. So, I'll praise to the Most High Heavenly Father and His glory, Son. I hope somebody uh, being blessed by this message. And um, remember, whatever it is that you need, try giving it to somebody that needs it more. And, 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 and give God's word an opportunity to, uh, to work. And for brother and sister who might be skeptical about putting monies in the hands of somebody else, you can always do. The book of Proverbs tells us that the wise man looks well into the matter. Go and look well into the matter. Go and find out. Go and find out if the place that you put in your money is a reputable place. If the place that you want to sow a seed or make a donation to is a reputable place. Find out if it's genuinely out there helping people so that you can feel comfortable about whatever it is that, that you're doing. But for the brothers and sisters that are connected to me, you know, we are the most highest firefighters and his rescuers in our arena. And so... Uh, I make this perfectly clear. There is no way in the world that I can rescue nobody. Uh, the designated driver of the fire truck, fire truck, he couldn't do nobody in the house that's burning up. No, he couldn't do nobody no good. The only way he can do good is when he got the one that's going to operate the holes on the truck. He got the one that's going to operate and go up on the ladder on the truck. And they got the ones that's going to go in the building. All of them have to be together on one truck and become the rescuing force in this world. And when it comes to doing dealing with this health ministry, it's the same way. I might be the driver, and I might have the vision, and I might have the eyes to find out where the help is going to be put, you see. But I ain't the one that's climbing the ladder, the, uh, the one that, that's going in the house. See, all of these, it takes all of us to get these things done. And so let's, let's see what we can do. Peace and blessings be upon everybody that is able to uh, respond to the opportunity. Uh, our prayer, once again, for those we bless, ask the Most High to bless those that, that are able to give. And uh, and we ask Him to bless those that have a desire in their heart to give, but are unable because of their circumstances. And we pray that those that are able to give, that the Most High would double and triple whatever it is that they have left. That He would double it and that He would triple it. Let me tell you something, baby. I was out there, me and my sweetie pie. We rolling. We riding in an old school. I'm not going to ask you a question, but I prayed about that last year at a picnic because my cousin, them, they killed me. But when we was coming up, we was always in the cars. And, and my cousin come up, and he got this pretty Eldorado Cadillac. And then the other one come, and he got a pretty drop-top Eldorado. And I said, man, y'all ain't going to keep leaving me out, man. Y'all got to get me one of these cars. I can't afford to buy one of them cars. Them cars are very expensive. I don't have the money to do that. I said, okay. The most high blessed me with an old school. And me and my sweetie, we was out there rolling. I was like, man, I was having a flashback. <laughs> Until, boom. Man, we on the highway, I heard this loud noise. I said, oh, man, the whole rear end fell out. I got out of the car. I was so happy. It was only the back tire had blew out. But boy, that shook me up bad. So I said, okay, cool. We got in the trunk. We jacked the car up. We put the dummy on there. We let the car down. And the dummy was on the flat. I said, what am I going to do now? I said, okay, well, we just go, I just have somebody to go air the dummy up, 
and we take off running. <sighs> Look up, the car wouldn't start. Fuel pump that went out. What I'm gonna do? I need to call a tow truck. Only problem is, I got tow truck money in my pocket, but nobody accept cash. Here we stuck on the highway. I got triple eight, but I done took some hits throughout the course of this year. So I done burnt up all my triple A stuff. They said, well, we still triple A, still come get you, but you got to pay $99. I, okay, I can pay $99. The only problem is, you got to have a card. I ain't too ashamed. I ain't had no money on no card. I ain't had no credit card in my pocket. I got a couple of credit cards, but I don't keep them in my pocket. I keep them at home, you know, unless I need them. Then it suddenly dawned on me. Lo and behold, while me and Sweetie Pie were stuck on the highway figuring out how we was going to get home, it suddenly dawned on me that I had this in my pocket. This, it stays in my pocket. I take everything out of my wallet. This it stays. Let me show you something. These two right here, they stay. Because this is my rescue mission. These are my fire truck and my water hose. When somebody's in trouble, I'm on the way. These stay in my pocket. We stuck on the highway and the only thing I had was this in my pocket. I had cash in my pocket to pay for a tow truck, but nobody accept no cash. My brothers and sisters rescued me and Sweetie Pie off the highway. Because when it dawned on me that this was in my pocket, I never think about it for myself. But when it dawned on me, I said, oh, I got the PayPal card. Okay, I can. So I was able to pay for the tow truck, and they sit in the tow truck. And we made it home safely. But if there were no brothers and sisters, if there were no brothers and sisters that would that would prioritize contributing, we'd have been in trouble. And there have been many other brothers and sisters that um have been in trouble likewise. So so to all the brothers and sisters that can and will, come on and join. We give it an opportunity. I'm going to say this one more time and then I'm going to end the video. We don't beg for money. We do not beg for money. We don't believe that no man should be out here paying another man no tithes. But we do believe that people should find ways that they can give out of their abundance. We're not telling people that they should give anything to me. I would much rather see people going to their neighborhood and organizing with other brothers in their cities and in their towns and create these same type of platforms so that the people in your city can receive help or you can it can be rescuers there too. So we don't beg people for money. But we give brothers and sisters the opportunity to come alongside and be a part of, of God's rescue force in this world and his rescue force are really classified as the servants the great ones he would desire to be great among you let him become a servant 
of all men. And I don't care where you go. And I don't say this with no type of pride because it ain't about me. But the only thing that the Most High give us is our own life and his word to paint pictures. But you can go through my town and you can gather up as many people as you can find that know me. And you can ask every last one of them, have Michi ever misused you? Have he ever abused you? Have you ever had a need and you went to ask him and he said, no, I couldn't help you? Have he ever got something from you and didn't give it back? Have you ever did something from me and he was just set and, you know, you can go and ask. Go and ask. And they'll tell you, go and ask. Because we don't operate like that. I know who I am. Got Captain Von Zell on the line right now. But one day I went to, went to work with Captain Von Zell and I made a video while we was there. We went to a house to wash windows. And Captain Von Zell always dealt with the white people that was rich. Something about rich white people. They like poor people working for them. But I made the video talking about how great the servant was. This house was a mansion. Had 99 windows that had to be washed. And we was charging them. $10 a window, I do believe. And as we were washing the windows, I was like, man, look at all these. No, it didn't. It, yeah, yeah. My, my 99 windows, I was 100 windows. And I was doing it. And I made a video about how great a servant was. How great the servant was. And when Captain Von Zell, he said, well, you know, he added up the, added up the windows and he, and he used me for the spokesman to go up there and talk to the people. So he said, uh, meet you go up there and, and tell them it's $1,200. I was like, damn, $1,200. That's, that's a lot of money for one job. I walked right up to the door. I knocked on the door. I talked to him. I said, you know, and, uh, and uh, okay, it's going to be $1,200. Okay, no problem. We'll get you straight. We'll get you together. And I was like, wow. It was then at that moment that I realized how important a servant was. That was probably about six years ago. The servant of servant. And I stood right out there walking around that house with all them windows making the video on how great it was to be a servant. Because what a servant get through serving, you know what make a servant great? It's because people don't want to do the job that he going to do. They don't want to do it. They don't want to cut the grass. They don't want to wash the windows. They don't want to paint the house. They don't want to clean the house. They don't want to do nothing. So guess who becomes the greatest one? The one that comes in to cut the grass. The one that comes in to clean the house. The one that comes in to wash the windows. The one that comes in to make sure that weeds don't turn into trees and trees don't mess up foundation. Them are the great ones in this world. He that would be great among you must become a servant of everybody. And a servant servant. Serves God's people and he don't cry about it. He don't whine about it. He's content with who he is. He's content with where he's at. I ain't trying to sit on no high horse. I help anybody with whatever they need to be done. I don't need no limelight. I ain't got to stand out front. I don't need to come. Just leave me in the background. I'll push you as far as I can push you and help you with whatever, I, whatever you can be helped with. I know who I am. A lot of times people want to throw me out there in the front. Nah, boy, you gifted. Nah, man, you cold, man. Dude, you know, you get out here and do it. I don't want to get out there and do it. It's not that I can't do it, but I don't want to do it. I know I can do it, but I don't want to do it. That's not me. I'm a servant. I don't want to do it. I'll stand in the background and I'll pour all my gifting on you. I'll invest my money in you. I'll put my time in you. I'll put my energy in you. And I'll let you get out there and shine as the great one. Just you know that when you have eaten and you are full, that is the one that's standing in the background that's responsible for your success. And when you're successful, you remember that it is God that gave you the power to get that job that you got. That bought that car that you got. That bought that house that you got. That makes sure that you're eating steak and lobster tails. And just you remember it was God that gave you the power to get that wealth. And when you have eaten and you are full. You better remember that lest you forget and then declare, my own hand had done this for me. Oh, I worked hard. I'm the one that got out here and did it. Oh, boy, I know. 
unless you declare it was your own self. You being how many, you know how many brothers and sisters in that position? That's the position y'all don't want to find yourself in. So, you know, giving keeps you have a humble spirit. So those that can and will help us to keep something in the helps ministry to where we continue to be uh, uh, rescuers of our brothers and sisters, uh, the Most High will uh, greatly appreciate it. And I'm going to show you one more thing, and then I'm going to end the video. I'm going to go to Colossians 3rd chapter. And I'm going to read this for you. Verse 23, it said, let's see. It says, servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service, nor men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing the most high. That's one thing. Because you have to understand the reason why you're doing things. You're not doing it to please no man. You can't say that you're going to give to something, you know what I'm saying, to try and please me. I'm not the one that need to be pleased. You have to do it in singleness of heart. It has to be something in your heart that desires to be, to, to be fallen in obedience to that servanthood. Because you're trying to please the most high. It says, and whatsoever you do, do it with your whole heart. As if you were doing it to God and not unto men. So at the foundation of whatever it is that you do, you do it with your heart. If it's not in your heart to do it, don't be doing it. Don't just be doing it because you was on a Facebook live video because your brothers and sisters was on that. Hey, hey, I did it. I sent it over. Don't do it for that. You it'll have to be in your heart to do it. He said, you do it. Whatever you do, you do it with your whole heart as though you was doing it. I was the one that was sitting right there. And you was like, I I'm doing this for you, God. He said, because it's the most high that is going to give you your reward. It won't be Brother Milligan that gives you your reward. Brother Milligan can come on here and thank everybody for what they do. But I don't really single people out. You see, it's the most high that's going to reward each individual for the work that they do. So having a good conscience and a good motive about whatever it is that you're doing is going to make all the difference. You're not doing it for me. You're doing it because it's in your heart to do. And you recognize that you have a desire in your heart to be great on God's program, and that is to be an obedient servant. And that's your motivation for doing things that you have the Lord's assurance that he will bless you because he said, don't do it for men because it is the Lord that is going to give you your reward. So all praises to the Most High Heavenly Father and may his peace and blessing rest on all of you. This is indeed a great day to be alive. This is a day that the Most High have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Remember, we are God's rescuers in this world. Every day that we wake up, we should be looking for an opportunity to, to rescue. Who can I rescue? Who can I rescue? Man, boy, every time you rescue somebody and that register in your mind, you think, oh, man. The most I like, well, look at them go. Look at them go. So when we like that, we're good. So peace and blessings be on all of you.